If you've ever used Clip Path to crop an image or create an interesting shape in CSS, or if you've used Shape Outside to make text flow around a more intricate shape, uh, a more intricate floated shape, um, you've probably run into CSS shapes. When I first used shapes, I found them a little bit hard to work with because I couldn't always visualize what all the numbers in a path meant and how they were gonna turn into a visual shape on the page. Even a basic circle or inset box, some of the values might be fairly clear, but other values, I, I'm not always sure how they're gonna crop. I was excited when somebody showed me this website called Clippy, uh, where I could select from different shapes, uh, and then I could move values around, create exactly the shape that I want. Uh, and then down here at the bottom, I would get the output value and I could copy and paste that uh, into my code wherever I needed it. But this takes several steps. I have to come over to this site, uh, maybe upload my particular image, uh, figure out my clip path, and then copy and paste and take it back to my code. Um, and I don't really like leaving my code and coming back to it in that way all the time. So I was really excited when Firefox 62 added this new tool for visualizing and editing shapes directly in the browser, directly on my website. Um, and so I wanna show you how that works. So I'm gonna start here with some of Jen's demos from her labs website. Uh, and I'll just open up this tomato one first. So to get to the shape editor, I'm going to start by opening up the developer tools by inspecting this element. I'm gonna inspect that tomato because I think that's where the shape is applied. Um, we can see there's the image uh, and down here, shape outside circle. Um, and we can see this little icon here, this shape icon. And if I click on that, I'll see the circle that's being created. And by default, uh, that's doing a circle from the center to the closest edge. Um, but then I get these handles that I can grab uh, and I can move how big the circle is. And you can see it changing over here as I do that. Uh, I can change the size of the circle and I can change where the circle is centered. And then we can see here if I overflow the box, the path is never going to go outside the box. So I get this solid line on what the actual path is going to be. And I get a dotted line on where my circle actually extends outside of the box, outside of the reference box. Um, and I can make lots of adjustments like that right in the browser. Um, and I can see them update over here. I can also, when I hover over one of these numbers, that handle highlights over on the image. Same with this one here, that's the center point. Uh, and the same is true in reverse. When I hover over one of these handles, you can see the numbers highlight uh, over in the editor. But there are various other types of shapes that we can control in CSS too, and they get a little bit more complex from there. So here we have an ellipsis example, and we can see the ellipsis written out here. Uh, and again, I can click on that, um, and I get the center value that I can move. And with an ellipsis, I get two different handles uh, for the vertical. I can move that in and out. And the horizontal, I can move that in and out. Uh, and again, I get that overflow of the reference box is all visible. Another thing I can do here, so if we think about this, uh, not as the ellipse itself, um, but as the square that we're creating uh, from each edge, if we hold down Command or Control and we click this icon again, we'll see that outer box. Uh, and then we can scale the whole thing in different ways using these extra handles that allow us to change the vertical scale, the horizontal scale, or both at once. Uh, so a few extra nice tools there, depending which type of scaling we want to do. We can go back and forth between those. Uh, looking at a more complex example, polygons are where CSS shapes start to get really interesting in my mind. Uh, we can use them to create uh, jagged edges. Um, they don't have to be a clean circle or a clean line. 
um, we can set all of the edges that we want. So here we can see a polygon that Jen created, and this is sort of where I start to really lose track. Um, I look at this and I really don't know what all those numbers are doing. Um, so if I click this again, I can see actually the line that's been created from all those points, and I can actually see which point is which. Those are gonna highlight when I hover over them and vice versa. If I hover over them here, they'll highlight in the visualization. Uh, right away, I see here that this point seems to be extra. I don't think we need it. And one of the cool things about this shape tool is when I'm dealing with polygons, I can actually just double click and it will remove that point. And I can remove any points that I want to. Um, and as you can see, I'm breaking things here. If I want to add a point, I can also do that by double clicking. So I double click somewhere on the line here and it gives me a new handle uh, that I can drag where I need it. Um, and I'll create another one here. Um, and again, we can see that reference box if I go outside of it. And this time, if I command click on that and I get this outer box, I not only have the ability to scale vertically or horizontally or both directions at once, I also can move the center and I can rotate the entire thing. Um, I'm not gonna need that here, but it's a handy trick. I can do quite a bit with this tool, but I don't only use this tool for inspecting and editing shapes that are already there. Um, sometimes I use it to create a new shape. This is how I'll start when I'm creating a new shape on one of my pages. There's one type of basic shape left that we can use this tool with. It's called inset, uh, and it just does an inset from the box. And here we can see I've got four values. Uh, they're top, right, bottom, left, and we can just move those in from the edge or out from the edge, uh, although out won't really do anything. Um, and we can see them change here again. So uh, inset just gives us a rectangle based on the existing box, um, and then we can make adjustments in setting from there. Um, and I don't really want to do that for this Gwen Verdon demo. What I really want here is a polygon. And I sort of have this basic polygon that I draw by default um, because it's fairly simple. Um, some zeros, some hundreds, uh, just to give myself three points. We need three points to start with, any three points, uh, and then I'll edit them using this tool. So I give myself just this basic polygon, and then I select here, uh, and you can see it's not what I want, um, but it's given me something to start with. Uh, and then I can start dragging these around, double click to create a new one, double click here. I can actually go tight in if I want to, because what I'll do then is add a shape margin of 1M, uh, and that will give me the distance that I want for my text away from the cropping. Uh, and I can get that exactly the way I want it. And then I can either copy it here or I can check my changes uh, and see exactly what I've changed and copy all of them together, um, or go into my style editor and see it written out there. This works not only with shape outside, but also with clip paths. So if I copied that same path uh, and created a clip path using the same one, we'll see right away that that offsets slightly differently. And that's because the reference box is a little bit different uh, depending on whether it defaults to the margin box or the padding box or the border box or the content box. Um, but all I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna command click that and drag it out a little bit, and I'm back to where I need to be. Uh, and those are both based on the same path, um, but adjusted slightly. One of the things that I love about all of this is just that the fallbacks are fairly straightforward. So if we remove these, we can see what we get as a fallback. Uh, and it's just text floating around an image the way we would expect it to initially. Um, so not a huge loss if this doesn't work out uh, exactly the way we expect it to. So we can get quite intricate with things like this. Here's a demo by Stacy Cavernmo, who I work with, uh, and you can see this polygon is quite complex. Uh, and she says she did this all with the path editor to create it, um, just dragging all those little anchors around uh, and then using them both for clip path and for shape outside. 
uh, and it works really well. So you can do quite a bit with this and start to get really creative about the shapes that you're making uh, and make them very quickly in line on the site as you're building it uh, without ever leaving your code. I think this tool is really great. I'm really glad we have it. Uh, I use it all the time if I need to create shapes um, and I think you should go play with it right away. Music